Hey guys, how are you doing? A lot of you have been watching this channel for quite some time, but a lot of you are also new and you probably don't know how to navigate through this channel because there are so many videos and so many playlists, right? Uh, and in a recent video about two days back, I talked about this playlist called the 17 Golang Projects playlist, which is which is a playlist that I've created, uh, which is one, uh, every single video has a different project and there are 17 such projects. And I've created that playlist as uh, a starting point for beginners. So you start from a very basic Golang server and you end at uh, a, a full AI bot uh, on Slack using with AI and Wolfram. That's how you proceed through that complete playlist. Okay. Now, after you've done that, after you, after you know how structs work, how pointers work and how you've used all of that in practice, where do you go from there? So there are multiple uh, playlists on my channel that you can do after that. Uh, but first, I always recommend only do that particular uh, playlist if you're a beginner just touch only that playlist those 17 videos only after that you start going to different playlists on my channel because uh, the playlist can get really difficult really quickly okay some of the videos and then i get a lot of comments saying that hi hey i didn't understand that i didn't understand this and uh, you know i'm having difficulty understanding this it's because you're not following in the right order so let so i'll just tell you the right order in which you have to follow it so first you do those 17 projects 17 different projects you've built those 17 projects you're going to start feeling really really comfortable and really, really ex um, like experienced and uh, confident with Golang, right? And then you'll be ready to take on all the other different playlists. If you try to do any other play playlist, like, uh, you know, for example, the CSR token playlist, you're going to, you're going to flip, right? Your mind is going to flip completely. Anyhow, now, <clears throat> after you've done those 17 videos, you come to this video. This is a building a to do list with Golang. Okay, so this will have a crud, but it'll have a lot more things, right? So, uh, you'll just understand how to bring all of that together into building an actual to-do list kind of project. Now, if it might feel really easy to you because since you've done those 17 projects, so this might feel really easy and that's completely okay. Just go through it quickly so that you just, you know, brush up your topics, brush up your knowledge and all of that. And also put this into practice, build a new project. So this will be your 18th project. Okay. So you imagine having a portfolio that you'll have with 18 projects. Uh, you can go for any job in the world, man. Anybody will hire you as a Golang developer if you go with these 18 projects. Okay. Um, and then you have, then you start going into the scraping side of things because with scraping, uh, slowly we'll start using a little bit of, uh, parallelism with, with, which Golang provides us concurrency and all that. So, <clears throat> so this is, uh, so you start with here, this is the most simple Golang, uh, scraper that I could build because I usually use a lot of libraries and sometimes even if I don't use libraries, I use some very different kind of code, uh, which you don't want to uh see because it's it can get very very concurrent very quickly uh so but this is the simplest scraper that i could build without using any library so that you could understand how scrapers work because golang as a golang developer a lot of people might expect you to also uh build scrapers uh as, as what i've seen in the industry right so you, you either either build your own databases and caches and all infrastructure level things like even terraform go docker kubernetes all of them are having built with golang you all probably already know that or you'll build scrapers so these are the kind of jobs that you'll get as a golang developer right so building scrapers is very very important because um, that's kind of reinforces your knowledge of how uh, golang can really work really quickly and you can actually uh, use the complete power of golang so you build this simple scraper without using any library and then you build, uh, you will start using a very basic library called Go, Go Query. It's not going to be only used for web scrapers, but it's going to be, it's going to have very, very massive and very wide applications. So you have to learn how to use Go Query. Okay. Uh, so this is the second video, which I think is very important. You have to do this. Once you've done that, then you start creating your little Golang weather tracker. This is, I think I have used, I've created a Slack bot here to, or, or maybe not, I don't know, but this is an important project. Okay. So just, um, just do this, the, the weather tracker and you'll, you'll learn quite a bit. And then you uh, come to your discord bot. So this is where the discord bot and Slack bots, all of that start. So discord bots, um, uh, because as, as a Golang developer, you'll have to create bots at some point of time in your career. It could be a discord bot, could be a Slack bot, or it could be a different bot, but it interfaces with so many different types of bots like Alexa and Google home and discord all of this at, all, all at the same time, probably. Uh, so it's important to learn how, how Golang, how discord bots work important to know how slack bots work you'll because i'll take in these two um video uh, series i'll take you exactly through how the the complete slack interface and how do you actually build a bot and how do you you know um like deploy it and all of that stuff is there then you have your golang scraper uh, google scraper 
um, you can start scraping Google results uh, with this. Now, there are a lot of applications of this. A lot of people ask me, uh, why would I ever want to build a Google scraper? Because I can just go and get the results from Google directly. But that's as a human being. But as a, as a, as a bot or as a machine, if you want so many results, you want to do something with that data, you'll have to use a scraper. I'll give you an example. If you were to scrape LinkedIn, you will get caught very fast. You know that, right? If you try, if you've ever tried scraping LinkedIn and getting all the LinkedIn data, let's say of how many people or which person is working in which company and all of that data, if you try to scrape it, uh, LinkedIn will catch you because it'll know it'll know that uh, you know this is probably a bot and not a human being because of the usage signature the time signature and the number of requests that you make per second all of those signatures will use to determine whether it's a human being or a bot uh, using linkedin right now uh, but if you used google scraper you could scrape all of the information from linkedin without ever going to linkedin but actually you know searching just things on google and then uh, scraping that information and this can be done for many different websites a lot of uh, really advanced scrapers they use this technique to scrape a lot of websites which require which have uh, you know um, which basically require you to log in and all, do all of those things but uh, for which but but even if linkedin wants you to log in uh, it it also does want to be really good with seo so it does display information to google so if if google bot is coming it won't ask a lot but if uh, you create your own bot and log into LinkedIn to scrape some information, you probably won't get caught. So this is a way that a lot of people uh, use to scrape so many websites. I'm just giving you an example of LinkedIn, but you can use it to scrape so many websites. So this is why having a Google scraper is very important and you will use it a lot in your career. And this is why I've created it. Learn it, see how I've done it. Uh, use this code in so many other places. You know, you can do so, so much with it. And then I've shown you how to uh, scrape an actual website. So now you'll say that, you know, how can I scrape an actual news website? Because a lot of people want to, you know, gather a lot of news, create news aggregators, and so many different things you can do. And and you can uh, also use this data to train your machine learning uh, systems, right? Train your machine learning algorithms to create insights. And uh, so for all all of those data science and data science related projects, you would want to scroll information from different websites. And I've shown you how to do it with Guardian.com, which is a great. Uh, news website they have all the security and all the mechanisms in, in, in place to stop you and still uh, this uh, scraper works so see how i've done it apply it into practice and use the score on other websites then comes the bing scraper just like golang uh, google scraper we have bing scraper because sometimes you uh, don't get some data with uh, Google or Google also uh, tries to create some problem you'll you'll understand soon that's the place where uh, Bing kind of helps you uh, to become a better scraper because you can scrape Bing a lot easier okay so that's a tip that I want to share with you uh, you will use it in your career later on um, and I don't want to say more than that before like before getting into a lot of trouble <laughs> so bing.com is kind of important you would want to scrape it on many occasions watch it uh, watch it because the code that i've written i've explained it really well in this video i had some more time on my hands because i was on a vacation or something like that and i had more time so uh, all the other videos uh, like let's say the, the google scraper video i was uh, you know i have to make these videos when i'm working right on, on a full work day but this video uh, i created when i was on leave so i had more time explained really well and i had more time and i explained every single line so just go through it and you learn a lot more okay so and then the go plus react project now i am not a uh, react developer uh, i know react I, I can use it really well but i won't call myself a react developer. i'm not a react expert right uh, but i use it a lot so i've tried to show you how golang and react can work together um, but like if you're having trouble understanding it uh, you need to really work on your Golang skills because a lot of people had trouble understanding it. It's because they were not doing any of the Golang projects that I've shown you. They just came directly here, started building this project off directly, Go plus React. And then obviously you'll have problems because I'm assuming you've done all the other things right before I even show you all this. So uh, I don't know why uh, somebody would just come directly and learn a full stack Golang project without even knowing how Golang works. So people have put all kind of comments here that how do you use structs? I mean, are you serious? I mean, watch all of the other videos and then come here. Okay. Uh, and then um, and then you want to get start getting a little serious. So I've used this uh, package called GenConnect. It's a very popular library and we've used JWT and then we have used MongoDB to create a complete authentication system. So now once you start building your own projects, you want to obviously um, create an authentication layer on your project so that users can 
uh, authenticate themselves before they use it. So this is why uh, you have a complete project on authentication. There are about six, seven videos here, six videos here, and then you'll. Uh, this is how you you'll get a lot of confidence here after you've done it. Okay. Then this uh, crawler, sitemap crawler, you could do it before the JW authentication. Actually, you could do it before, and um, this crawler would. Now this is a very very powerful project. Okay. Um, what if there was a you got a crawler you, that could crawl any website from starting from the sitemap because sitemap is like the map from where you start crawling and it could go to every single page and it could scrape all the information that you want from any website in the world. This is that this is that crawler. Okay, so you want to start it. You want to uh, learn this properly. You want to. Uh, th this is a very very powerful tool in your possession in your arsenal as as somebody who works in a company or if you want to start your own company or you want to uh, you know work in a very high paced startup this is going to serve you so well because you can scrape so much information you can use that information and find uh, and, uh, insights you can use it to train machine learning programs or you can use that information and sell that information sell that data there's so many things you can do with the data right you probably know that if you're a developer there's so many ways to make money with data and this helps you do that so now but this is advanced right uh, if you haven't done the other the google and Bing scraper and all those things this why this won't make much sense to you so do all the scrapers and uh, and then you come to this crawler which is kind of little advanced okay uh then you have uh, so yeah then i've, I've already gone over the jlt authentication then we create a microservice because Oh, once you've learned so much Golang, right, you want to then start working in microservices. You don't want to have monolith projects. So this is why I, this is I've shown a very simple uh, microservice project. Now I want to show you more advanced microservices projects on this channel, uh, and I have planned out a complete microservice project using Docker, Golang, uh, uh, sorry, Golang, Docker, Kubernetes, Terraform, Prometheus, uh, Grafana, the the whole stack, right? Even with monitoring and all of that. But uh, I, uh, I, you know, I don't think the people who are watching my YouTube channel right now are that advanced that I can go ahead and start showing all of that uh, at the moment. So I'm trying to build a lot more beginner-friendly videos so that everybody kind of uh, becomes at the same level and people become more comfortable with Golang so that I can start showing uh, microservices, okay? Which is my favorite topic, by the way. Okay, and then comes your Go Plus Redis. Your little shortener project series. Now this is kind of at an intermediate level. All of the things we were doing till now were, uh, I would say, for beginners. But this is not for beginners because you're using Redis and you're using Go Fiber. So if you don't have experience with GoLang, if you don't have experience with Go Fiber, if you don't have experience with Redis, like a little bit, if you've not used in your career uh, before, you're not going to understand any or anything in this uh, series. So don't even bother. But if you know Golang, you have you've worked with Golang, you've created multiple projects uh, on my channel. Uh, if you use GoFiber and done the, uh, you know, the CRM and the HRMS projects. And if you've used Redis ever any time before in your career, um, then this will make some sense. So this is why I've, I've said clearly it's an intermediate level, intermediate level project. Don't attempt it if you haven't done all of that, okay? And once you learn this, uh, now this is a very interesting project. It's a URL shortener project, it's very interesting. And after you've done it, you will feel very confident in Golang. If you've done all the things before that, and if, you don't, if you've done this, you will feel very, very confident with Golang and you will feel like you'll be able to build almost anything. And that's the right frame of mind to start building this restaurant management project, which uh, is again at an intermediate level, uh, kind of, beginner to intermediate level uh, as in even if you're a beginner you will understand this but uh, this will help you a lot more if you're at, at intermediate level because uh, then you'll have the patience and the discipline to go through 18 long videos and building an actual restaurant management project back-end project for Golang okay and this is when I um, af but after building the restaurant management backend project you will feel extremely confident of building web related you know crud related those kind of uh, applications which have authentication all of that and uh, that's the right approach to then start with the Go plus DynamoDB bulletproof CRUD API. This is for experienced developers only. I've said that here. Do not attempt this playlist if you are not an experienced developer. I would say ideally uh, at least like two years of experience with Golang and generally like total in total backend development experience about five years, I think, four or five years maybe. 
you should not um, attempt this because it's just going to get difficult for you. Uh, at least that's what I think. I mean, that's the ideal uh, scenario. But in, in case you want to uh, try it out, do it. But if you get confused, uh, please do not message me on LinkedIn saying that you got confused with this series because it's not for you. Okay. All of the other things are for you. So be patient, go through everything step by step, sequentially, work your way up till here. And then there's one more, um, there's one more uh, series that I'm working on right now. Uh, the Go CRS, CSRF uh, series. This one, by the way, is not complete right now. The, sorry, the DynamoDB one is not complete right now. All the other series, all the other series are complete except for the DynamoDB one, which I have to yet complete. Uh, I think two, three more videos are remaining there. And similarly for the CSRF security one, it's not complete. This is why I've not show, uh, like created a playlist for this. Uh, I did for DynamoDB, even though it's not complete because I just want to keep it in one place. Uh, so for some people had requested it. And uh, for CSRF, since it's not complete, I haven't created a playlist for it yet, but I think I should. But it, it, it is, I think about four to five videos are still remaining here before I, I, I can say it's complete. So I'm just trying to complete those series. And then uh, a lot of you would already know that I'm trying to complete my e-commerce Golang uh, project series, which will take, I think, four or five more videos. And then we'll have quite a lot more uh, playlists on this channel, right? And this is why I created this map, uh, this complete channel guide so that you can, you know what to do and when to do that. Uh, by the way, the e-commerce one, I recommend only after you complete the uh, restaurant management series. And the CSRF one also I recommend only after you complete uh, the e-commerce one or, or you've done the press on management series, it'll, that'll make a lot of sense to you. Or if you're an advanced developer, it'll make sense to you right out of the box, not a problem. And once you've done all of that, then you approach the DynamoDB series because it's, it's a little more advanced. It has a lot of code that uh, a beginner would think, uh, why are we even writing all this code, right? A beginner would think like that. But it's uh, but as an advanced developer, you know, okay, all, all this is kind of required because it kind of saves you in so many different situations. So that was that was it from my side. I hope this video was helpful. It will help you navigate through this entire channel. Watch. I hope uh, you know if 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 you know other people who are watching this channel, if you're following this channel, uh, who are your friends, share this video with them specifically before they start with anything, so that they know how to navigate through this channel. So thank you for watching and do subscribe to the channel because there, there, there's this awesome content out here. I mean, I mean, it's amazing, right? You won't find this on the internet anywhere. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.